Hi all. Um, I thought I'd come on and discuss hate crime and bullying and cyberbullying in particular as it seems there's been a bit of a influx on cyberbullying over the weekend where one young lady um, did insinuate that she was going to take her own life um other youtubers have called people ugly as in their looks and they need to realize some of this name caller they may think it's funny but actually it's not they can wind themselves up in court um we'll explore this on this channel now and i found some brilliant information on the anti-bullying alliance but there is also a lot of training available tools and information about cyber crimes and bullying um and anti-bullying week is coming up on the 13th to the 17th of november so i may make a big thing of this across my channel uh to bring to try and bring people together so how is a hate crime and bullying defined well legally in the uk the police and the crime crown prosecution service or the King's Prosecution Service, whichever way you want to define them, now is a hate crime is any criminal offence which is perceived by the victim or any other person to be motivated by hostility or prejudice based on a person's race or perceived race, religion, perceived religion, sexual orientation or perceived sexual orientation, disability, perceived disability, or any crime motivated by hostility prejudiced against the person who is transgender or perceived to be transgender we'll look at the crime motivated by hostility hostility that you have created against someone for the way they look because beauty as this is only skin deep you were looking at someone and saying that they're ugly you define what that ugly thing is ugly could be somebody is the way they are acting ugly could be the way they are dressed but you were targeting someone because of the way they look in their features so this is the guidance that crown prosecution service give however a hate, in, hate incident does not necessarily break the law where a hate incident amounts to a criminal offense and is based on one of the five protected characteristics it is known as a hate crime the type of conduct which will be considered as a hate crime incident is wide ranging and includes the following verbal abuse, harassment, bullying or intimidation, physical attacks, threats of violence, hoax calls, abuse of phone or text messages, hate mail, online abuse, displaying or circulating discriminatory liter literature or posters, graffiti, arson, throwing rubbish in a garden and malicious complaints and we'll take the online abuse and we'll look at that online abuse is covered under the UK cyber laws and is in particular the malicious um, malicious computing legislation which we'll have a little bit of look of later um actually i'll have a quick look at it now 
Cyberbullying is the use of electronic or online communications by someone to threaten or intimidate another person. So, when you are constantly going on about somebody and the way they look, are you not actually intimidating them over the internet? So the types of cyberbullying that's going on, uh, going on over social network and sites such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and now threads. So you were using your means to troll people over these over your side over your channel basically and here it's saying yes this is about children but for adults as well if we have a quick look we will find that the cyber crimes prosecution guide i will have a look at this and i'm sure the black belt barrister has done something about this as well not so long ago because he felt the need to so here it's saying every day every day we millions of communications are sent across the internet and social media but some you've got to prove are a credible threat to violence to the person or damage to property and some specifically target an individual which may consist constitute harassment stalking controlling or coercive behavior, behavior or disclosing private sexual images without consent and or one channel owner did do that and when called out about that it didn't like it but here in the UK it is an offense for him to share their post that uh, images of such nature under the sexual offences act of 2003 so if he was using that to blackmail people he could have end he could end up in the uk courts and quite possibly locked up and militia uh, the malicious communications act of 1988 makes it an offence for a person with the intention of causing distress or anxiety to send certain certain items to another person which convey an indecent or grossly offensive message or are themselves or indecent or grossly offensive nature or which convey a threat or information which is false or known or believed to be false by the sender in section 32 of the criminal justice and court act of 2015 makes the offense an either way offense and increases the maximum penalty to two years imprisonment and or a level four fine this will allow more time for investigation and make a more serious penalty available in appropriate cases this came into force on the 13th of april 2015 this section 127 of the communications act 2003 makes it offense to send through public electronic communications network a message that is grossly offensive indecent or menacing of character the same section also provides that it is offense to send a false message for the purse 
purpose of causing annoyance, inconvenience, and needless anxiety of, anxiety of another. So if that person has a real hang up about how they look, and a, for example, that person has self-harmed in the past and has not mentioned about their mental health online because they are intensely private, do you think that that person keep banging on about the way they look and for it, that that is a perfect example do you not think that they're gonna that's gonna cause them even more anxiety hit their depression even worse do you think they're gonna they could either start self-harming again or do something even worse You need to be very careful of what you see online, no matter which country you live in, because it now has come back and bite you on the backside. Right, cyberbullying and trolling. Cyberbullying that takes place using communication technology, such as social media, but also text messages, apps and chats, emails and forms of communication depending on the nature of bullying may constitute in criminal activity and prosecutors should apply the principles outlined in the legal guidance on communications via social media when considering allegations of this nature. For example, cy cyberbullying might involve harassment, threatening behaviour, sending false information about someone, impersonation, cyber stalking, or grossly offensive messages as I've mentioned before. It is also important to remember that evidence of bullying online may indicative of the bull of bullying and the possible further off offences offline too. So they can actually apply for a warrant to search for other information about you, whether it's with your local police etc they can actually search they can actually ask for a warrant to seize your equipment to search further and they don't need your passwords now to actually access your information virtual mobbing or dog piling is sometimes called as well virtual mobbing occurs when a number of individuals use social media or messaging to make comments about another individual usually because they are opposed to that person's opinions as above the principles outlined in the legal guidance on the communication sent by social media should be applied in cases where certain individuals encourage others to send such messages, prosecutors should consider offences of encouraging or assisting crime under sections 44 to 46 under the Serious Crime Act of 2007. False accounts, I will not go into that because that's not what I was talking about, but Again, if people are setting up false accounts to uh, gain fin for financial gain, that is covered under the F Fraud Act of 2006. Right. Disclose and private sexual images without consent. In the UK, this is a section 33 of the Criminal Justice and Courts Act of 2015. This was an offence that was created because um, of revenge porn. And those private sexual photographs of films without the consent of an individual who were peasing them were being shared about. And it was causing distress. There's been a lot of 
cases in the court courts recently where ex-partners have sent these around and they have been dealt with accordingly. Okay, and I will leave that there because the rest of it is going into something that is more of a, a black belt barrister issue than just a general issue than what I wanted to cover because of the cyberbullying. If you want to have a look at another reason why I decided to cover this, I think I covered it again in, in the previous video, but if you wanted to understand why I've done this, go over to Saggy Melons, go over to um, a few other channels where they, uh, this was actually dealt with. Um, you'll find the find the comments in another in other channels, but this is actually the CBS Cybercrime Prosecution Guidance from the 26th of September, 2019. So the, we, we do have quite a lot of laws that do cover the thing. And there is another bill going through Parliament at the moment to cover all of this a bit more as well, which will also mean that things will get a lot tighter of what we can see and what we can do online. So it's not just the effects of what can happen to children online, it's what can happen to adults as well. Cyberbullying. This is from Utah um is rumors teasing gossiping insults threats lies name calling harassment and mean words so i'm going to take a screen grab of that and Use this as my thumbnail. Thank you for listening. And I thought we found this informative.